buttons and it'll just work. Okay. Oh, Mike wants us to open again with the U-shaped helm. Hey guys, what? I'm not even on. We have a little new room here. It's a little crowded. Poor, poor E is just getting shoved out of the way. Uh, we're here for the Project Start stream. Sorry, it's uh, a little bit late. We got a new room. We're just making everything set up. Uh, and I got two designers here, Henry and Bradley Reeb. And, you know, you get these two guys in the same room, good luck getting anything. Uh, I will be here the whole time because two designers in the same spot. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to throw Henry out in a second. So uh, my name is Mike Lascaux. I'm the community manager for uh, Project Spark. I'm here with uh, lead designer Bradley Reeb and with Henry Sturchy, who is the creative director and a special guest star, E. And E, why don't you jump in and kind of tell us a little bit about you and what you do and what you can say about I know it's all super secret. Uh... A lot of it is. Uh, so I'm Eric Neustetter. I work at Xbox Live. Been there about 12 and a half years. Uh, actually long enough that I have the first gamer tag on Live uh, E. That's why everybody calls me that. And uh, I'm a big fan of Spark. And this is kind of my first chance to get my hands on it and see what I can build. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, when I'm not doing this, I'm making sure that your games work on Xbox 360 and Xbox One. So. Andy has a cute dog too. Chat, chat, yes. rel chat reliably informs me. So yes, I have lab, an adorable right? dog. Yes. Black lab He's or a brown? La uh, black lab Rottweiler mix. So. Nice. He is the most handsome dog in the world. So no, no cruelty to animals in the game, okay? Reeb, I'm just saying it could be. We'll promise him nothing. No burning yeah. squirrels like Eddie did or anything like that. He, well, he does chase squirrels occasionally, so that might be okay. Oh, all right. Sure? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our goal today is we're gonna. Um, he hasn't really played the game before. I think he loaded up the alpha and maybe spent a few minutes with it. Uh, but he hasn't done it. And we really want to see what is it like to, for somebody new to come in. Can we teach him how to use the game? Will they be able to, to go through and get it? And, uh, you know, we don't know. I mean, maybe this will be a horrible disaster. You know, we're always kind of on that thing. But before we get going, we're going to start off with Henry doing his um, L shaped. Much beloved. L shaped. Or, no, I'm sorry, U shaped. I always get those mistakes. The much beloved uh, demo here. I, I've been hearing about the U-shaped hill. I've not seen it, so this is a first. Well, I don't know if I'm so. going to be able to replicate it uh, up to the standards that people have. It does have high standards. It's true. Right. So Project Spark is an open world sandbox that allows you to make your own games, movies, stories, uh, and a whole lot more. You can bring your imagination to life, share it with the community, uh, and go ahead and play it on Windows 8.1. Xbox 360 and Xbox One. We've got a Windows 8.1 beta coming up. So what you can see here is that I can sculpt the world in true 3D in real time. So I can go ahead and I can uh, build up this uh, starting U-shaped hill here. And then that's our add uh, tool. And I can jump in here and then I can grab a little uh, plateau and tunnel tool and put a little tunnel through in real 3D. That's a sad U. I, well, yeah, it's like a, it's like some other kind of a it's like a sideways dramatical seat. problem, I guess. So uh, I can go ahead and I can set the size, the intensity of the brush. I can go ahead and shape the, change the shape of the brush. So here I'm going to, instead of creating uh, terrain, I'm going to go ahead and make a little river around it. And then I can go ahead and I can paint. So you can color in your world very easily. It wraps around the sides and the surfaces of things. When you paint the sides of objects, it uh, dynamically changes what surface you're on contextually. So here you can see we painted underneath here and it has these cool little overhangs. So I could run the, the river right through the yeah, shape Yeah, you could. Yeah, so let's, we could do that real quick, actually. A river runs through it. <laughs> let's just go right, ah, put our guy in the water. And now we have a cool river right through the U-shaped hill. Nice. And then you can go ahead, if you want to quickly add what we call props and paint the world, you can use your biome tool. And the biome is a very quick and fast way to create life in your world. Based on the size of your brush or your cursor, you can actually fill in bigger trees and things a lot faster or uh, add different like automatic dynamic wildlife and rocks and things like that. And then very quickly and easily, you can drop objects into the world. Uh, here we like to do things like um, add our bridge and uh, enemies. All of these things have default behaviors attached to them. And you can go into any of these anytime you want and you can go ahead and test and play. Here's the quick little world that we made. You can see that this character already has uh, default brains. You can swim, run, jump, climb up the bridge, and all kinds of fun stuff. Now, I can go into any object in the world, and I can actually see its brain. We have a very simple visual programming language based on when and do. So very simply, we can go into our brain tiles, which is our visual programming language, and we can say things like when. Don't player jump. Detect. I did that last week. I know. 
Uh, how about we do shoot? Sure. And then uh, I can say shoot at. So uh, last week we had the birds jump. This week we're going to say when detect player, shoot at player. So we're going to build a vicious, um, destructive bridge of shooting doom, I think. Henry, they, they're saying you can, they can tell you're, uh, uh, you're tired of this uh, demo intro. No, no, no. There's oh. always something fun to happen here. Sometimes people <laughs> say bad things about his <laughs> in intro and he gets, he gets sad. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, we've got a lot of uh, really dedicated people that have seen these very often. So uh, we try and mix it up a little bit every time and do some fun stuff around, like, the bridge shooting and killing me and the bridge jumping and launching me into space. So there we go. So I'm going to hand it over to Brad to, uh, and you guys are going to go off the uh, mouse and keyboard. So you can use a variety of inputs. I use the Xbox 360 controller on our Windows build. And then you can see um, we can use touch and we can use um, mouse and keyboard. So there we go. All right, let's All right. do this. All right. So I'm going to hop over here and let E and Brad take on the show. See you, Henry. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks. Have fun. You going to leave or are you going to stay? You going to leave? Don't leave us, Henry. Don't don't leave. No. Okay, so this Thank is. Thank God he's gone. Oh my God, I can't <laughs> stand that guy. Jeez. Uh, this is our tutorial experience. So um, this is the first time I think Henry talked about this a couple of twitches ago. Is that right, Mike? That's right. Yeah, game guides. And um, yep. And so we're gonna step through um, like one step at a time and show how easy it is to learn Spark here. Okay. Okay. Uh, right now we're on keyboard and mouse. Um, for beta, that's been our focus um, because it's a Win8 beta, so we want to make sure that that the uh, most common input devices, uh, we really focus and nail that experience. Um, over time, we'll be expanding on this to include, uh, you know, controller and touch and all of, all of those input devices as well. Okay. So, um, I don't know. What, like, basically, uh, you get the little swirl, directs you where to go, and the uh, text explains each step. Okay. Choose a hero. Uh, open the prop gallery. Large so, collections of things. That's right. So some of these boxes are giving you insight into the mode you're in. Um, and other times, when you see the swirl, they're actually directing you to um, perform an action. Okay. So here, the context here is, is that you're um, building your first hero in the game. And um, this, this tutorial focuses on building an adventure experience from beginning to end. Um, so in the first part of building a hero, you have to figure out who your hero is going to be. Okay. The squirrel is tempting, but I think I'll go with Woodland Ranger. Ranger. Good choice. So after, so we just stepped you through like um, navigating through the prop gallery, how to find the characters, and now you're going to put put it in the world where you want it. Okay. And just drop them anywhere? Anywhere you want. Okay. So that's one of the goals with these tutorials is that they're pretty open-ended. So, um, you know, you playing through the tutorial, you're going to make a different game than somebody else. And we really feel that these are more than just tutorials. It, you might want to play through these more than once to create different combinations of games, different game experiences, just by playing through the tutorial. So it's a tutorial and kind of a starter kit for Build My World. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So these are like the default go in and tweak him? options right here? Yeah, so when you have a prop selected, um, there are the four four main ways of interacting with the character. His brain, which is in the upper left, um, the properties and um, different edit options, which is the gear. Okay. Um, the character studio, which is the little running man. Um, we'll, we updated that icon in uh, a more recent build, so that'll look a little different in beta, but it's basically the same. And then you'll see uh, rotation and uh, movement uh, options, and then that's scale there. Okay. Click on the brain. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Kodu statements? Yes. I assume. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Yeah, nice. so we're based off of Kodu, so we call um, the lines, we call it code with a K. Okay. Isn't that clever? That the, our best yes, marketing it, folks spent months. As long as it doesn't have the jingle like the cars with a K commercial that I hear oh, on the yeah. radio, I hate that. I that, love that. I wish we could play that. No, the little kids singing just. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all statements have a when and a do. Okay. Start with a blank brain. That seems appropriate. 
Yeah, so normally if you drop an object or like a character in the world, it's going to come with logic. But because we're taking you through this tutorial experience, we're kind of zeroing that out because we want to get step you through the um, like you building your first brain. But then when I add other guys later, they'll all have exactly. some defaults. Yeah, have you played Kodu at all? I have. Yeah, yeah I okay. actually used it a bunch uh, with my son as kind of a you know basic logic training kind of thing. It was pretty cool. Uh, all time. Okay. Controls. So the setup here is is that you're starting to build out your heroes. So we're gonna we're gonna okay. start by um, adding the controls to make movement. Right. So W A S D will be my when I hit it. One of those keys do now we'll tell it to do the movement. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Do movement. Move. And I don't have to specify what the different arrow keys do. It knows W A S D is left, right, up, down. Right. The tile. Yeah. The W A S D tile. Um, we've under the hood, we've created a tile that gives you direction based off of pressing one of those. Okay. Now, if you wanted to make it the arrow, you know, the arrow keys, that's also an option. We also could map it to a random set of characters if you wanted to move up uh, with like the Y key, for instance. Like you can also do that. It might take you a little more work because we haven't given you those shortcuts. But but you can make any make your movement uh, work with any keys. Okay. So now we go test it. Exit the brain editor, and in the pause menu we can, oh, test, okay. Yeah. So we're just stepping you through um, testing your game for the first time. Okay. Um, so you can see how it all works, right? And that's important to, to Spark, is that rapid iteration between test and play is uh, key to the experience, right? Like, you want to make little tweaks play them, see how it works, make adjustments, so on and so forth, right? So um, as we step you through the tutorial, we're hoping that people really embrace that, right? Like, don't just spend a lot of time in the editor. Like, it's about, like, experiencing it as well. Right. So use that test button as, as uh, often as you want. And I can get, basically, tweak one thing, instant feedback, and keep fiddling until I get what I'm looking for. Exactly. Okay. Back to create mode. It's a little weird that I'm going into his brain every time. <laughs> so when, oh, so when I do, say, space, do jump. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Even I can do this. Anybody can do this. Uh, Weeb, how, how close is this, do you think, to the experience that uh, our users in beta will experience when they go through this? This is very, very close. Very we, close. There's a few bugs that... Um, that we've ironed out. Um, this build is a few days old, so uh, we've ironed out some uh, bugs with it, but generally this is the experience that people will have for beta. And uh, like I said earlier, we'll be continuing to update this. Each, each, hopefully each update will have um, additions and improvements that we'll be adding to this Sweet. as well. Oh, so it's multiple pre-built brains in there? Is that what, what I saw hiding in there? Oh, the brain yeah. folder? Uh, the brain folder allows you to do things like push brains to objects in the world to like completely change their brains dynamically in, t in the test and play mode, right? So you could say, okay. you could say like push a bird brain on the guy and then all of a sudden he'll start flying around like a bird. <clears throat> Can I do when do's with that? Like when this thing happens, change the character's brain? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, when we, after we get through the tutorial, we could uh, we could play around with that. Okay, so now I've already got a functioning guy. He runs around, he can jump, the camera follows him. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so you can see just with a few steps here, a few lines of the K code, you've already got the beginnings of, uh, of a playable character. See, when you say it like that, K code, I think. K -k code breaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to create mode. It's sending me back into his brain once again. That's right. We're not quite done because heroes need an attack, right? Okay. So let's kind of add. Um, I think we're going to add a melee attack and a ranged attack. We're going to specify the la left mouse button, and then attack. Oh, there's a nice collection of options coming in there. That's right. So the attack tile is really cool because there's a lot of functionality built into that single tile. 
um, you'll see when you jump back in. We've got uh, you know a combo chain. Um, there's there's just lots of behavior that goes into good melee attacks, right? Um, but with uh, adding additional tiles at the end of it, you can change anything about that tile as well. So you can change uh, the combo. Like right now, I think it's maybe light, light, medium. Um, you I can... like the fireball. <laughs> <laughs> and again, with the shoot tile, there's a bunch of functionality built in, like shooting a fireball. But you can change what you shoot to be a fish or an arrow or whatever you want. OK. So I could actually I could build myself my dog and throw him tennis balls in this game if I wanted to. Absolutely, yeah. That's cool. I like that. Okay. Done testing. All right. So now we've got a hero. We need something for him to fight, right? No, we're not going to make E thrust the fireball out of his pelvis. All right, maybe later in the stream. Right, I'm okay. guessing you've already done that from the way you're saying You know, no, that's just what they're saying. They're like, well, make him do that. I'm like, mm. not, maybe not later. Sure, not sure we have the connect hooked up right in this room, right? <laughs> <laughs> to the time warp, right? I like drop and straight to test, and there he is. That's right. And so this is a great example that this goblin has an enemy brain built into him, right? Um, we can go into his brain. We can change anything about his brain. We can make the goblin the hero if we want. He's trying to trying to hit you there. He was, but he got fireballed pretty quick. Oh, sorry. I'm watching the delayed version. I gotta pay attention. <laughs> it's not like we're in the same room or anything. I know, right? That's right. Come on. Okay. Do that. I am somebody that's like across the desk from you and stuff. So what's really cool about about this is um, is that each of these are, we package up into little modules. So the act of creating that hero, the act of placing the goblin, those are each their own little modules that in the middle of your create session, you can just go into the pause menu and summon those in the middle of whatever you're doing. So you could be building like a platformer okay. and say, you know what? I don't really like, I'm not getting anywhere with my hero. Like, I need some help. I'm going to hit start. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to uh, pick the he build a hero module, and it'll start you right in that module. And you don't have to play through the entire thing. You can just play through the part you want to learn about. Okay. So we've packaged it two ways, right? You can ask for help on a specific thing, or you can um, walk through an entire like step-by-step -step guide on making a game from beginning to end. But if I forget how to like change my brain so I can shoot, I can go back to that part and revisit it. Um, well, right now you would play through the entire hero module, but each of them are pretty short. So, okay. so you can get to the part you like, take what you want, copy and paste it into another brain, for instance. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, get what you want out of it, and then continue doing whatever you were doing. Okay, cool. <clears throat> okay, now I get to build a world. Excellent, I haven't gotten to build a world in days. <laughs> okay. So we're stepping you through some of the basic camera controls with the hero and the um, enemy modules. Uh, there wasn't a huge need for it, so, so we've, um, position the triggering of this module um, right after the uh, those two modules are finished. Okay. Build a mountain. <laughs> Mike, what are you installing on this thing? Hmm? There were some install notices that came up. Oh, really? Oh, no. Oh, wow. Okay, that was uh, larger than I was planning on. Yeah, so we've, we've got the um, intensity. That's one of the bugs that we've worked out, so it doesn't kind of come out as quickly. Yeah. Um, but if you... Drop the scale down a little bit. Brush it back and forth. That's how you get the best shapes with this tool. So this is the expand tool. Um, and it uh, basically pulls the terrain, right? Um, the other thing that you can do is you can slide that little bar at the bottom. This one? Yep, go ahead and grab that. Uh, maybe it's locked out until a little bit. It'll, it'll get enabled in a minute when the uh, tutorial progresses. But you can basically just create shapes really, really easily um, and quickly, just pulling the terrain out. Um, from itself, you know. I um, mean, the bigger your brush, the faster and the, the with more force the uh, terrain will get extruded with. 
which is how I wound up with that giant thing right in the middle of the map. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. So you can also carve it away. Um, so the expand tool, that brush shape, if you click on it, it inverts it to the other side. So now you're going to okay. push the terrain away. So if I wanted to get rid of some of the giant stuff that I did. Yep. And I'm carving. You can just, you know, almost erase it away. It's a little different than an erase because you're actually literally pushing it down, but... Um, that kind of gives it character, though. Yeah. It's not flat. It's rough and tumble, and that's kind of cool. So this was the part of the tutorial where the undo just unlocks. So down there in the corner, it says, you, you know, you can't make a mistake in this game because you can just scrub that bar. Oh, okay. So you can, the arrows on the far left and right um, will allow you to undo and redo one step at a time, but you can also just scrub through that bar. Okay. Oh, it's telling me to do something. I can't do it while it's telling me to do something, apparently. Uh, select the brush <laughs> intensity tab. That's a bug we'll have to look into as well. I bet I can, do it. There yeah, I can do it now. I just can't do it while it's telling me something. So I can, oh, that's nice. And then I can pick the spot I want to go back to. Exactly. OK. I love being able to freeform that stuff around. Some pretty cool shapes there. Those are shapes I would not have been able to do if I'd planned for them. <laughs> but let's add some color. Oh, I was told I couldn't wear green, but I can paint green. That's right. So this is teaching you about the, the basic concepts of paint mode, right? right? So you have this palette at the bottom, and you can choose the different materials. And uh, you know the controls for scaling your brush shape and your intensity are all the, exactly the same. I like how it automatically, as I go up the mountain, it changes from grass and things that are appropriate on flat surfaces to what would be appropriate on a big climbing mountain. That's really cool. Yeah, by default, our terrain material system just looks awesome, right? Like, you don't have to do any extra work to, to get, like, hills and mountains and valleys. And even when you start painting into water, um, you get, like, a little coastal material uh, with the biome tools that just looks, it looks so good. And I can get, I've got snow and ice up here, mm -hmm. but down here it's more grassy. Let's make my brush a little bigger. And then I should rotate and get the other side. That's very cool. And some more ice. Okay, now what if, like, I've got a nice little kind of puddle. Whoops. <laughs> what did I do? Uh, I think it uh, I zoomed, way, zoomed out. way out real yeah. quick, yeah. Let me get back in there. So if I wanted to, whoops, uh, let's move. If I wanted to drop like some water in there, can I do that yet? Yeah, there's a prop called a water pool okay. that you can drop in there. Um, yeah, we can do that a little. Or he could make bit. a little lake and raise the water level, right? He could, but if he wanted the water to stay where it's at oh, I see. everywhere else, gotcha. and he just wanted a little pool there. Okay. Water pools are unique. Unique and interesting. Hey, they are, they are. I'm just going to leave him there and go explore a little bit. He's pretty persistent. Now, I built a pretty steep hill. Can I get up there? I oh, can. yeah. Okay. So can I, can I build... See, there's where my water is going to go. Can I build something that he can't get up, or is he going to be able to get up basically anything? Yeah, there is a slope that, like, that slope that you're climbing up there, um, unless you program him to jump, he won't be able to pursue you there, right? Okay. Um, so... Oh, but I could go jump into his brain, add jump. Yeah. And, okay. Do we want to do that now, or should we come back to that later? Uh, we can do that later. Okay. I'm trying to think, too, how he, like, how we'll get him to detect, like, being on the flat ground versus hitting the side. Okay. We'd have to draw a... We could do that with, like, a raycast. Ooh. Oh, there he is. He's been waiting for me. Come here. Here, little goblin. Ah, uh, see? He, 
he's uh, he doesn't, he doesn't have the, uh, the behavior built in <laughs> to jump out. Got it. So, so he's I trapped stuck him. on that ledge. Yeah. Good. Okay. He's just fine. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Okay. What next? <laughs> that's great. Escape when I'm done testing. Done testing. It's like one of those koi fish pools, only you have goblins. Yeah. <laughs> you have people over. Hey, you check it out. I'm probably not going to feed him very often. I'll just leave him in there. Yeah. He's fine. You can just drop him in there, and you'd be your little pet. <clears throat> Choose a background material for my path. So the idea here is, is that you're sort of like covering an area, and then we're going to make a path through it. So go ahead and make your brush really big here. And just blank it down, uh, you know, with, with the uh, grass. Just cover a big area. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then you can... Uh, Somebody's going to have to mow this. It's not going to be me. <laughs> Let me get the goblin out. Actually, yeah, I could program the goblin to mow the lawn. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. useful. That's more useful than a teenager. So you can't program them to... I've better. tried, no. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to actually pick your path material okay. and, uh, you know, make the path whatever shape and size you'd like. So you, this is teaching you about the uh, material gallery. So you pick a material, and if you go into the gallery, you can actually replace that material with any of the materials in here. So oh, okay. you have um, 15 materials to work with in your world. Okay. So I can say that's now forest path. Now I can pick that to draw with. And exactly. Okay. Except I don't think I want my path to be quite that big. Okay, we have a path. Okay, who doesn't like coins to pick up? That's right. So now you're going to go into the gallery. There's the coin. You can drop. I think it's going to teach you how to um, make copies of it as well. So this is really, really um, powerful because you, if you wanted like an army of those goblins, you can just do the same thing here. You mm -hmm. just instead of placing a hundred goblins, place one, clone it, and copy it a bunch. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. <clears throat> so we pick the clone option. And now you're in clone mode. You can just click and add as many as you want. Got it. I'll put some up here. Why not? So, Reeve, the question is, is the number of materials per world capped at 15? Now, I believe that's just what's on your quick bar, right? Um, no, there, you uh, have a limit of 15 materials in your world. Okay. Um, and then through level linking that we've talked about before, you can connect different worlds together. Gotcha. Okay. Back to the prop gallery. Oh, so there's enough there's enough stuff in the prop gallery that I'm going to need to be able to search it. We oh, have, wow. Yeah, hundreds of, of assets that are going to be there day one on the beta. Um, so huge collection of trees and plants and rocks and characters and yeah. weapons. and. Okay. I like that. So it's going to step you through using some of those, uh, uh, the scaling and the rotating tools that you were asking about earlier. Okay. So all it is is click, hold, and then drag left and right. And you oh, can make it bigger it. and okay. bigger and smaller. There are max uh, sizes and min sizes uh, to the props, but um, the range is quite great. OK, cool. And then I can turn it. Oh, OK. And it stays connected to, if I drag it with the yellow thing at its base, it stays connected to the altitude of whatever I put it on. So That's I can right. put it in the water or put it right there. Yeah, and if you use that yellow thing, um, it'll actually stick it to the ground. And I know there was a bug with this, so I'm hoping that it was uh, fixed in this build. But after we get through this, I'll show you. You can use the expand tool and um, pull the terrain underneath it, and the tree will stay stuck to it while, as it goes up and down. OK, cool.
Okay. So is that the tutorial? Then? That's that's the basic tutorial that we'll have in beta. So okay. this is you know teaching you how to place an enemy, how to create a hero, and the basics of making a world. Right. You um, where how to use the prop gallery to find objects, um, how to add them to the world and manipulate them, okay. how to uh, um, paint and sculpt with uh, the basic uh, expand a road tool. Um, there's a ton of other sculpting tools that we'll be making modules for down the road. Uh, like the add subtract tool, the plateau tunnel tool and those, and we can walk through those with you um, if you'd like to today. Um, but basically... <laughs> Sorry, I was busy trying yeah. to get him stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Here, little mm -hmm. goblin. So... It, how hard would it be to give the goblin a brain so that he'll go and try to get coins? And then I was thinking, like, build things to prevent him from getting the coins, like turrets and things. Sure, let's let's give that a shot. Oh, wait, he's not... He didn't get stuck. Okay. Yeah, I don't think the slope on that ridge was quite high enough for him. No. Okay, he's done. I'm good. All right, let's go ahead in there and uh, change it so that he wants the coins. So find your goblin. Yeah, where did I put him? Where does he start? Where did I put him? Um, I think he was over by the front of your mountain. Over there a little bit. <laughs> Somewhere in that range. Here, goblin, goblin, goblin. <laughs> he started close. There he is. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Okay. okay, so go ahead and click him, and let's move him out so we can see him a little better. All right. And oh, and I can change the size, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so go ahead and click on him. Let's go into his brain. All right, so um, this is this is one of the default brains. This brain is um, is actually not as hard as as dif difficult as it looks like initially. Okay. So what it does is line one team equals team two, so it puts it on team two, and our team system allows uh, our combat mechanics like attack and shoot uh, to target things easily and intelligently, right? Yeah. Like you okay. don't want to accidentally hit your buddy, right? Who's on who's on your team? Right. So by putting um, characters and objects on different teams, you can really easily make them like fight each other and behave properly, right? Okay. So he, by default, he's going to go with the nearest person not on team two. Right, his enemies. Right. So if you're on a team, you automatically have an enemies list, a friends list, and a neutrals list. So in this brain, enemy is nearest object. If you actually replace that with coin, he'll, he'll target the nearest coin. Okay, so how would I, where would I find, would that be on page two maybe? Um, so you'll want to back up one page. Okay. So the top arrow that points up, um, go ahead another one. Okay. And we're going to go into objects. Oh, and okay. And say open prop gallery. Look for coin. Yep. Got it. Pick your coin. Okay, so we're going to need that near, actually that should work. Just go ahead and right click on enemies. And say delete. I think E is too good at this. He's, he's picking it up too fast. I know. So let's scroll down a little bit. Let's check the other stuff. So if we don't detect a coin, we're going to detect the player. Um, do you want him to attack the player? Sure. Okay. Yeah. And then after the distance to target is less than 17, um, we're going to move towards it. So if we want him to just like move towards the nearest coin, we're going to want to get rid of this this logic. So here, this right? is his detection range. If you're farther than 17 away, I'm going to ignore you because I can't see you. Exactly. Okay. So we can either increase that number or we can just take that out entirely and just have him like start moving towards coins. How do we take it all out? Okay, so what I would do is click on the line 7, left click on the 7, um, and click the arrow to the left to move it in a line. So what's happening there is it's a child rule. So when, when a line is indented under another rule, it only runs when the rule above it runs. Oh, got it. But by moving it outside of that whole block, that's just going to move all the, it's going to run all the time. Okay. So basically every frame it's going to figure out what the nearest coin is and then it's going to move towards it. Okay. And if it doesn't, ha if there's no coins in the world, it's going to move after the player. So okay. let's go ahead into test mode and give that a shot. So he's actually still has logic in there that he's going to try to attack the coin. So okay. he's moving towards that coin that's under him. He's trying to beat it up. And he's trying to kill it. Yeah. So we can go back into the goblin's brain and change that as well. We can have him like pick it up or destroy it or whatever we want him to do. Okay. So left click, brain, 
and when coin do is this the part we change right here? So that's setting the target. I think what we'll want to do is scroll down a little bit. Okay. And um, that line six, go ahead and right click on that and delete it. We'll just get rid of that because I don't think we want it to do any of that right now because that's all this, the logic for him to attack. Okay. Um, and let's go on, let's make a new line seven. So click on that little plus and we'll say when we bump the coin. So sensors. Sensors. Bump. Oh, okay. So when we contact, now we tell it what we're contacting. Right. When we contact the coin, do... What do you want him to do? Uh, so would that be under combat to, let's say, pick up the coin? Pick up the coin? I think that's in objects. Okay. Um, items. Inventory. Pick up. Ah, okay. And then we're going to need to add one more tile. We're going to add the it tile. So the it tile is a special tile that takes information from the win side. So when we bump the coin, we're going to pick oh, up it. Got it. And that's going to be in objects. Um, and it yeah. is the big apple right there in the lower left. Okay. So let's give that a shot now. So I think he's moving towards it, and it's in his inventory, so he's not going anywhere. So instead of picking up it, let's try destroy. Okay. Because that'll remove it from the world, and then he'll find a new coin. Got it. Okay. And this is what I'm talking about with like the iteration loop, right? Like making a few changes, going into tests, seeing how it works. Right. And then um, you'll you'll want to back up to the root and go into uh, the create directory. Um, and then like making adjustments and, and trying new things is like all part of what Project Spark is about. Okay. So you said create? Yep. Okay. Create and then there's destroy right there. All right, let's give when that I a shot. Bump into the coin, destroy it, and then go back to my loop. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, he is successfully eating my coins. Okay, now if I want to put something in the world that will stop him from, that will stop him without my having to. So a turret, something like that. How would I go about doing that? So let's go ahead and uh, build our object first, right? Okay. So we can go into the prop gallery and grab like a pillar and then we could put like a crossbow on top. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and search for pillar, I think will come up. If not, we can search for materials like stone and wood and place that somewhere. Right in the middle of the track. Okay. And, and then a crossbow on top? Yep. Go in, Go ahead in and you can search for weapon and you'll see a huge list of weapons that we can pick from. So oh, nice. there's crossbow and we have a lot more that, are, that aren't even in this list. So okay. I can't wait till the community sees those. And go ahead and just place that anywhere. And uh, go ahead and move it. Use those handles to move it so it's on top of that pillar. Um, so it's snapping to the ground right now because you're using the yellow, the yellow oh, thing. So use the yeah. So you can raise it above the ground with that. How I would do it is if you use the yellow thing and move it so it's in the same spot as the pillar, and then just move it up with the Y. Oh, the y sure. Thing, right? Okay. And then I uh, just click and hold and move it up. There you go. And you can scale it up to be a little bigger as well. That's more like it. All right, so um, it's flashing yellow because it, its physics setting is set to be a dynamic object. So right now, if you go into test mode, it's actually going to probably like fall to the ground. So let's go into its properties. Hang on, I want to see it fall to the ground first. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There we go. Exit out. So every object in the game can have it, have its physics properties set to be act like a character, to act like dynamically, like we just saw where its physics collision will um, sort of tumble, okay. or act as a fixed object. And the pillar is a fixed object. It, it sort of sits there. It doesn't move. Things can bump it, but it doesn't care about bumping anything else. Um, so we're going to go into the gear, and we're going to go into the crossbow's uh, properties, and we're going to go into the physics setting. And then um, right there, physics type, it says tumbling. Let's change that to fixed. OK, so now it'll sit there in the air. It won't okay. fall. And we can do whatever we want with it to turn it and um, um, rotate it and move it however we want. OK, okay. Uh, let's go into its brain. So go ahead and back out of this menu. So those are Property brain's brain. properties. 
Um, oh, okay. Yeah, we'll want to actually go into the brain itself. Got it. And let's delete line one. Go ahead and right click and okay. uh, say delete. And we're going to say, the first thing we're going to say is uh, turn towards goblin, right? So movement. Um, movement oh, sorry. We want it to be on the do side. Oh, okay. So we're just going to say always turn towards the goblin. Oh, there's no conditional. Got it. Okay. So that way it'll track him even if he's too far away or anything else. He will. Okay. And we could put a distance check in there if we wanted to. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll show you how to insert a tile here. But if you go into the open prop gallery, you can either use the immortal picker, and then it means it will only ever um, target that one thing in the world. But if you use the gallery, it'll target any goblin, right? Like you can see the goblin, you, we okay. use the gallery reference. And so that means any coin in the world, the goblin's gonna go after. Right. But if you use the own world picker, it'll be only that one goblin or only that one coin. Gotcha, okay. So uh, we'll wanna clear out the search field there on weapon and then click the uh, character tab. And is it the bruiser or the scavenger? The I think bruiser. it's the bruiser, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're gonna need to insert a tile in front of that. Uh, a couple tiles actually. So right click on the Goblin Bruiser and say insert. We're gonna s go into movement and say turn. Uh, there. Yep. Okay. And then right click on Goblin Bruiser again. So the red arrow, the red little uh, symbol there means that, um, uh, that the line is currently invalid. So it's giving you information that, that you either okay. need to remove tiles or add tiles to make it correct. So go ahead and say insert again. And let's go into modifiers. We're going to say toward. There we go. So now it's it's correct, okay. right? It's a line that's uh, that will work. So um, the little error, the little um, red thing went away. So it's a very specific goblin seeking goblin bruiser seeking crossbow. That's right. So it should be turning towards the goblin. Hmm. No. Okay, let's go back in and uh, see what else we can do there. Why don't you go ahead and change it to the in-world reference and uh, see what that does. Okay, me, so delete this. Um, go ahead and just cl left click on it and that'll be the same as swap. Oh, okay. And say in-world picker and pick the uh, goblin. And say confirm. All right, let's give that a try. Okay. And test. There we there go. There we go. Okay. Okay. Boom. So now we need him to shoot, right? Right. Okay, so now we'll want to... Oh, and he tracks. Nice. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what we want. I think what was happening there in the gallery reference was um, we needed to be a little bit more specific. So we needed to say put the um, goblin bruiser on the other, on the wind side. And then we could put it on the other side. Oh, when Goblin Bruiser turn towards it. Got yeah. It. Okay. I must kill him. He's getting all my <laughs> coins. Okay. All right. Now back to our crossbow. We have to teach it to fire next. Exactly. Round. Okay. Okay. So, do you want it like distance based, or do you just want him to shoot at him all the time? I think distance based, because otherwise he's going to instantly shoot and. That's no fun. Right. So. Okay, so now we're going to need the gallery reference for the Goblin Bruiser. So go ahead and add that. We're going to say Wing Goblin Bruiser. Uh, objects. I might get this wrong the first time, but we'll, we'll play it out. And creatures, Wing Goblin Bruiser. Yep, and go ahead and we're going to add a tile after Goblin Bruiser. We're going to say compare. Um, oh, back out, sorry. Uh, positioning, we want positioning. Or sen let's try sensors. Um, object filters. Whoops, that's my fault. Uh, objects. Oh, uh, sorry, it was in sensors. Sensors, filters. Object filters. Uh, objects closer than, and then we'll put in a number like 10 meters. Sure. Uh, values. Modifiers, value, there we go. Number. Uh, you put new number, oh, straight up. Okay. And then enter value you'd like. Okay, so when there's a Goblin Bruiser closer than 10, we want to shoot at it. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and say sh uh, combat, shoot, and then add a tile. Say modifiers, at it. Okay. 
And that's objects. Objects. Uh, the it. little apple. That's yeah. right. Okay. Why is apple equal it? I don't have that in my head yet. The apple is um, our carryover from Kodu. Um, the oh, it tile okay. used the apple back then, and we 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 liked it, carried it over. Okay. So turn towards the goblin bruiser when he gets closer than ten meters. Shoot at it. Yes. Okay. Interesting that it's in metric. But okay. yeah. We'll get there someday, world. That's right. Okay. All right. I should track him. Fingers crossed. It's getting pretty close. There it goes. Nice. Okay. So, <clears throat> a couple of things. First, we should make the goblin tougher because that was way too easy. All right. And the crossbow should not fire that fast. Okay. So the the, the chat is telling me that the headline now is Microsoft wants to eat wants to attack Apple. So thanks, guys. That'll be the <laughs> one takeaway now. I don't think that's exactly what I said. <laughs> but oh boy, okay, so I knew I was going to get myself in trouble doing this. <laughs> let's give him health. Okay. So go into its properties. And just like physics, you can change any of the properties about the object. So if we go into a combat, it's combat properties. We go into health and defenses. Okay. Right now, it's max health is 40. Okay. And you can, um, if you click on the text max health, you can enter whatever number, or you can just drag and scrub through that. Okay. So if I want to say... Uh, uh, try again. I, there you go. Okay. Just because I can. Yep. It, okay. It oral... It, Oh, it's it's keeping the okay. value, but it's Fine. not going to display it. Okay. Um, and then it's starting health is matching and uh, dodge speed. So that's if you give it the dodge tile. You oh, can, which it you doesn't by, it by default, but it can. Right. Okay, got it. Um, okay. okay. And you wanted to slow down the rate of fire of the turret? Yes. And maybe increase its uh, um, like range, maybe? Because that was pretty short. Yeah, it had to get a little too close. So. Okay. So we can do all of that in the brain, or uh, we can... Well, we have to change the range in the um, brain here. Go up one level from, oh yeah, you, you can do 20, that See, works. Sorry, I, There's some numbers I still need you, it's okay. It's, <laughs> okay, so we've changed the range. Now if we want to slow it down, how do we do So that? you can either go into its properties or you can modify the line right here. Um, so it's got a bunch of built-in properties about combat. That's right, so if yeah, we go into shoot, um, there's a shoot frequency value. Okay. And I always get this um, mixed up whether you want it high or low. So go ahead and just throw it in, and, and let's see how it feels. I'm guessing that's three per second. Is that? That's my. F that's how, what my gut says. So let's try it one per second. Okay. Now one last thing before I turn it back on. If I want to set it so that I am when I spawn, looking at all of this. All you have to do is grab your like, guy. And move him where you want him, and then rotate him. And you can you get a little window there. That little window shows you what you're currently looking at. Okay. And then the green thing is my rotate. Yep. Yeah. And when you let go, it'll update. Okay. Perfect. Let's test. Watch the damage that I have caused. Okay, clearly what I need now is more goblins, because one goblin doesn't stand a chance against the turret. That's right. So it's time to clone a goblin army. Let me show you a really cool way to do this, because if you just copy them, you'll have individual copies of that goblin, and then if you want to change that goblin, you'll have to duplicate those changes across all of them. Okay, okay so what, what I'm going to show you here is called templating. Um, so go ahead and click on the goblin. So it's like Imperial Stormtroopers, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Um, go into its properties. And go into, yeah, go ahead and there was properties, and then we're going into brain. So this is one of the brain properties, and if you click on template, the third one down, and set that to true, um, he's going to turn purple. Um, so go ahead and back out now. <clears throat> and when he's purple like this, when he's a template, when you go into test mode, he won't actually exist. You actually have to create something that's going to make these guys now. Okay. okay? So... Um, you can use any object, but if you um, cycle down on the little prop bar, see the arrow there, right there? Yeah, go ahead and navigate all the way to the end, and there's something called a logic cube. A logic cube is an object that won't exist physically or visually in um, play or test mode, but you can put brains on it to do things. So go ahead and add one of those in the world where you want them to spawn, start spawning. Oh, okay. I'll put them out here. 
That way they have to run past the turret to get to the coins. Okay. okay. Now let's go into its brain. And what we're going to do is say, like, every two seconds it creates a goblin. Does oh, that sound good? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So on the wind side, go ahead and add a tile. Go into timing and logic. And pick countdown timer. Okay. And let's add another tile. We're going to specify two. Um, back up one. Um, values. Numbers. Values. There we go. Uh, number. New number. Oops. Number. Yeah, right there. New number. There we go. Type in two. And we're gonna. We need it to loop because normally a countdown timer will count down to two and then it'll stop. So okay. let's add another tile here. Here. Uh, at the end of uh, the two. Okay. And go into modifiers. And say loop. And then oh, that's there's a loop tile. That's very okay. I was expecting to have to do you know some kind of nested loop. That's very easy. Yeah. So you're just basically changing how the countdown timer behaves because um, this every line of this um, brain runs every single frame, right? So um, just by putting the loop, you're just saying okay, we're not going to count down to two and stop. We're going to count down to two and then start again. Okay. Um, and on the other side, we're going to create that goblin. So we're going to go into the create directory. Uh, into the create directory. Uh, right there on the left. Oh, there we go. And then create up top. And um, go ahead and click and go objects in world picker. And click on your goblin. Say confirm. And there you go. That's it. So now you should be able to go into test mode and after two seconds it's going to create a goblin and then every two seconds it's going to create another. Oh, there we go. And we've got Oh, so he's gone goblin. because he's a template now. Oh, right? got it. Okay, that makes sense. So maybe you want it three seconds or five seconds. This is where you get to start tuning your game, right? But these right. goblins now are going after these coins. Uh, why? Notice my crossbow is not pointed. It's pointed at the template. Oh, it is pointed at the template. Hmm. But that it, looks like a bug. I'll have to file. That okay, one. it's very it's very <laughs> clear that I have more goblins than oh, I. Oh, there you go. Delay in beta again. So. I know. Oh right? my god. I'm going to have to help here because my single turret can't do this all by itself. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Though. I'm not sure that I can do this all by myself. Ah, run away. <laughs> well, that's a lot of goblins. <laughs> and it's never going to stop, right? Because we've never given the, that right. countdown timer a stop condition. We, we probably should have said, after a certain number of goblins, go away. It's worth noting, you see the coin in the upper right, that the coin comes with a default brain that allows you to pick it up. So you've actually grabbed one of them from oh, the goblins. Completely, by, and there's one goblin running away gathering coins. Come back here. So Reeb, the, um, the chat stream says that that's not actually a bug, that because he used the in-world picker, that that would be what you'd expect that to do. Oh, because I pointed it at the template. Right, at the template instead of... Mm. So we would have to do the trick where we change it to the other side. Right. So it's a design change, not okay. a bug. They I, hate that. They like to say everything's a bug. I, I clearly need another turret with a fireball or something, because this is getting a little out of control. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, let's go do that. So what would you like to do? I, I want a farther back. Like, so you could clone it? I think over, like right, right about here, I think a turret, short range, but with a fireball. So as they come to get the coins, I have something to back up my crossbow turret. Okay. it just can't hack it. So. All right, yeah. so why don't you copy the pillar? Copy is, how do we do that? Uh, go into the little gear and say clone. Okay. And you can make another platform for us to build from. And then, uh, let's see, what do you want to put on top that shoots the fireball? To say stop cloning, I hit escape? Escape, yeah. Okay. Um, what, what's already in the world that I can shoot fireballs from? Well, we could put that rock above it and turn it red. Put the rock above it. Yeah, like this rock there. Oh, you I see. Click on Looking that guy. Back, okay. Yeah, put it, add him to the world. Um, scale him up. And let's go into its properties. And I want to do this again, right? Yeah. Oh, I gotta get higher. Where I can... Um, the Q and E. There we go. There you go. Let's go into the properties. Appearance, um, and then those are the different um, color uh, channels of the rock. So you can oh. make them red or whatever color you want. Okay. Um, actually, go back in. You, you, uh, we need to ramp the uh, hue up. If you 
move it over there. You'll see the little preview in the upper right. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Okay, perfect. That's fine. Okay, so let's back out. We can actually go into the crossbow guy's brain, copy the brain there, and paste it into the rock, and then change what it shoots. Oh, okay. So go into his brain, and uh, press uh, the gear, I think. Okay. And say, copy page, and let's back out. And then go into the brain of the rock. Let's say, paste. All right, and uh, hit back. And, okay, so you paste that twice. So go ahead and delete lines three and four. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, whoops. And we're gonna insert, um, so right click on at, and say insert. And let's uh, go into objects, uh, open prop gallery. Okay. And do you see the little flame? That's your effects tab. And there's a fireball in here, so if you scroll through. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. fireball right there. And now it'll shoot a fireball instead of a uh, of a crossbow bolt or whatever a rock would okay. by default and shoot. And let's, let's make the range a little shorter. 17, sure. And to change the damage, we do that. Properties combat? Yep, you can do it there uh, again, or you can add um, tiles to the shoot line as well. Okay. That's, whoops, that's not quite what I wanted. Let's make that. So it will almost kill one, but not quite. Okay. And I think we're set. Yeah, let's see how this plays. Okay. So they're going to be turned wrong, but they'll still shoot, right? right. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Except they just keep coming. Hordes. For the horde! <laughs> and eventually they will get past it, and then this guy will do his thing. There we go. That's more what I had in mind. Although Gosh. I may not have given him enough range, but as long as I leave coins here, That's he right. will draw them towards me. And they will just... We'll see if it can keep up. Well, it won't be able to keep up. We'll see how long it can keep up. I'm going to have to let it do a lot more damage to keep up. It should do pretty well. <laughs> Microsoft hates goblins. Wait, did I just say we're Alliance? I did, didn't I? I can't align with that. Yeah, right. Most of my friends play Horde. Okay, excellent. That actually worked a lot like I wanted to. And Sweet. this is, I now have actually the basis of a tower defense game, which we were talking about before the stream started. I just need pathing. Exactly. And, and the coins up there that you put up on that hill, all those goblins in the background are trying uh, to get them. But if I go get them, they should unpath to those coins. And then they'll start. Yeah, as long as there's no other coins around, they'll try to get you. Okay, let me go get those ones real quick. I want to see them change their behavior like that. Out of the water. Where did I put them? There's a bunch that you just passed. They're I, I hidden did? in the yellow leaves, yes. Right there? Oh, you just okay. passed them again. There's a, still a whole bunch. Right there, see it on the edge? Oh, yep. Ah, oh, uh -oh. jump, uh -oh. jump, oh, jump! Oh. No, that's bad. <laughs> Run away. You landed on them. <laughs> oh my god. They don't have an action to attack me when I'm on their head? Uh, no, because we took that out of their brains. Right. Well, they only I care about the coins. I have to. You have to Blow fight your way, way out. out. This is ridiculous. Wow. Okay. That's better. That was great. The control was rumbling and everything. I, I <laughs> love the way that that happened, though, because that was not at all what I was expecting. We have emergent <laughs> goblin behavior. Wait, where's my turret? My fireball. Save me! I'm just going to run towards the fireball. You're kiting him? That's exactly what I'm doing. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> Uh, Except they're, they're all oh, they're like, oh, shiny, look at that. Yeah, they're all, <laughs> get over here, you <laughs> losers. You are going to die, though. Want to make a smart nice. bomb so you can kill them all? Yes. Yes, I totally do. All right, let's go back into edit and uh, pick your hero. Where do I spawn these days? There I am. I'm so tiny in my little world. And uh, let's go into his brain. 
and scroll down to the bottom and we'll go win, pick a different key. So go into controls. Uh, when enter. Okay. Um, we're going to say, let's add a line underneath and make it a child rule. So go down to line seven okay. and add one and indent it. So click on the little plus, um, yep. left click. Yep, and click on it again to get the arrows and indent it. Gotcha. All right, and so now we're gonna say for each of, uh, so timing and logic I think is where that is. For each of, yeah, the group of apples. Okay. Uh, enemies, we'll have to add, put you on um, team one as well so that you'll have enemies. Okay. Because they're on team two, right? Right, okay. Um, so go uh, up a level okay. and then page over. There's a teams directory. Oh, nice. And we'll say enemies. Oh, I could say, is it, okay, got it. And then we'll kill them. So do, do kill combat. <laughs> kill it. Objects, yeah. right? Okay, so we're gonna need to add once um, team equals team one. So on the win side. Okay, over here. Yeah, you could go into the goblin's brain and copy that line and just paste it in here, and then change the team two to team one. Okay. And Let's then we'll make sure that they're on a team. That. Yeah, perfect. So right click on uh, line one, on the one, and say copy, and back out and okay, go back into right. your brain. And you can right click on one and say paste. And then change to the team two to team one. Okay. All right, let's see how this works. Okay, and I should be able to hit enter and just wipe them out. Exactly. I'm gonna wait for them to be a few. It'd be a shame to waste my smart bomb on a measly couple of goblins. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, three. Oh there yes. Go. Okay, that's very satisfying. And I could put, I could put range on that. I could put uh, like effects on it. Oh yeah, so, absolutely. You okay, want to do let's, that? Let's. Yeah, I want to. Add some it needs to be more dramatic. All We're right. ridding the world of goblins. So. <laughs> so scroll down to your line. We're gonna add a um, child rule underneath for each of. So add a line and indent it twice. So now it's a child rule of for each of, right? And so we're gonna say um, play effects on the do side. On the do side. So oh, because create. it's only running at each time it's killed. So right. Got it. Uh, effects? Uh, so go create. Okay. Play effects. Oh, FX, like nice, got yeah. it, okay. And then we're gonna go into the gallery. So objects, open prop gallery, um, your effects tab pick the effect that you'd like. So land ripple effect? Uh, we could do the land ripple too. Uh, that, that one might Duquesne's, be tricky on so many. Duquesne's uh, suggestion. Hang on, let me look. Torch, no, no. I want something very dramatic. Uh, dark energy burst. Perfect. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna need to say on it. So add another line. Oh, another fires. line? Um, sorry, yeah, okay. not a line. Um, uh, you can do on, on it. There you go. And we might need to scale this guy up, so let's go into test mode and see how if it's how big it is. And if it's small, we can add a scale value oh, to the it. Oh, scale the effect. The effect, yeah, to make it bigger. Okay, yeah, because you need dr we're going for drama. This is you know the battle for Hell's Deep essentially. <laughs> Wait until we got a few goblins. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that looked great. That was nice. I didn't see it. I wasn't even paying attention. It's, what? Mike. Sorry, I was chatting. What? You have one job. I have one job. <laughs> Pay attention to do nothing else. Okay. And I here we go. Pay it. attention. All right, Look, all right, are you I, I'm watching. Okay. Oh, wow. That's pretty satisfying. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, okay. Okay, very cool. So, if I wanted to path them, do we have time to do that? Uh, how much time do we have? As much time as you guys need. You're the designer here. Uh, I'm just the community guy. Have, I'm doing I, what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I've probably got five, ten more minutes. And then I should actually, you know, 
go work because it's about eight days till the one launch. Yeah, you guys so. got something big coming on, yeah. right? This what is my that? lunch. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the probably the easiest way to do this would take us a little more than five ten minutes. But how I would think about it is is dropping logic cubes on the path, and then I would say if the I would make a check if a coin or one of those logic cubes are closer. So then you could direct them through the path that you want, right? Because you're already oh. basically pathing them with the coins based on the coin placement, right? So like if you made the lot the path that you wanted, they would be routed on that path. So right? so if when coin, if I also had when brain logic brain. Yeah, you would make an object that you're not using anywhere else okay. and you would say like when that Right. or that, and you'd f figure out which one is closer, and then you would move towards the closer of those two things. And then, um, okay. like, because something. then when the coins are removed, you don't want the ones that are spawned to take shortcuts through your path, right? Like, that's the trick. Okay, so if I switched from when coin to, because I've got coins all over the place, so I said when potion bottle. Potion bottle. And then I drop potion bottles on the path. It, they'll follow the potion bottles exactly how you would let, okay. want them to. So yeah. That's probably even easier than what I was describing because now you don't even have to do a check with the coin. You just make sure the potion bottles follow the route. You'll right. need, you'll still need, okay, so let's see, I got a flaw in, my, in our logic here. We, Because they're going to find the, the first potion bottle and stop. So you need a way for them to remove that from their list then. Oh, I'll need to destroy potion yeah, bottle. Yeah, but then the ones in the back will won't won't follow the right path right Oh, okay Got so it. what I might want to do is make a list of all of the potion bottles and then remove it from each goblin's individual list as they touch them so this right? is one two three and then it forgets about the old ones as exactly it walks down the path. okay That'll so you work. can create uh, what's called we call an object set so it's just a collection of objects enemies is actually an object set it's a collection of objects that exist in the world right so we would create a variable that would be like potion bottles and we'd put all of those potion bottles into that object set and then as the goblin touches them we would remove it and then we would move always have the goblin moving towards the nearest potion bottle and each goblin has its own set of okay yes. that makes sense so in a very short period of time when mike gets us all beta i'll be able to go do that that's right i'm okay that is that will be the first thing i will do and then I'll be able to put that up and share it, and anyone in the chat who wants to go get it will be able to go get my tower defense game. Exactly. Right. And we can we can try and save this one too, and sure, yeah, you know, put that up there as well. So okay, so you'll have that available. Okay, I am. My body is ready. Give me beta, Mike. Soon, it's beta is eminent. Okay, excellent. Sweet, awesome. Thanks for having me. This was fun. No problem. And yeah, thanks. thanks. For I, I know it's a busy time, so I really appreciate you coming in and, and doing that, and uh, the chat really appreciates it too. Good. So. Great stuff. All right, guys. So we'll be uh, doing another stream on Thursday. It'll be at... Uh, Come in the camera. 3 p.m. Sorry. It'll be at 3 p.m. on uh, Thursday. And uh, now it's going to refocus and everything and uh, all that stuff. Uh, I think we're probably also going to do another stream on Friday at 3.30. What we want to do, Eve, we were thinking of getting, especially now after seeing how, how well you picked it up, uh, Jessica Shea, community manager for Halo, Getting her on because she, you know, she's like, oh, I don't learn things fast, and I'm like, all right, well, let, let's see. We need to, you know, we gotta, we gotta have a game that, you know, does that. A lot of work. Jess is it. like eight times small, smarter than all of us. She, so, she's like yeah. the wordament champ and stuff. Like, man, yeah. there's like a million hidden. She's talent sandbagging there. you hugely. Oh yeah, she <laughs> totally do. I'm, I'm getting totally trolled by the community manager. There you go. So um, we're gonna see if we can get her on for Friday afternoon and do that. And uh, one thing to keep in mind, what I noticed with Jess, she's always seems to be giving out a lot of codes and keys for stuff. Huh? Yes, that's interesting. She's good for that. Yeah, that's really weird. Okay, all right, guys. So follow us on Facebook and Twitter, uh, and we'll be back at uh, Thursday at 3 p.m. And thanks again, E. Thanks, uh, Bradley Reeve. 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 And uh, no thanks <laughs> to Henry because he left early. But so. thanks, thanks, everyone. Guys. We'll see you soon.